Jim. Uh, if you're a dreamer out there, should you have confidence that this president is going to reach an agreement that will protect you from being deported? You should. I think you saw that. Um, you guys got to come into the room uh, in a pretty unprecedented way and sat in there for almost an hour listening to the president talk about it, listening to the president commit uh, to getting a solution on this. Right now, we're counting on Republicans and Democrats to come together, which we think they will, uh, to make a deal on DACA and on border security, uh, which is a vital part of that conversation and something that we insist be part of it. And a quick follow-up on, on FISA. Um, there seems to be a pattern, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, if there is no pattern, where the president watches something on Fox and Friends and then he tweets about it. Apparently this morning, uh, one of their uh, personalities, uh, Andrew Napolitano, uh, said that uh, this is not a good deal, Mr. President, don't do this. And then he went on Twitter and tweeted about the FISA program. Uh, there have been folks out there who have said, you know, there's a cause and effect. He watches something on Fox and Friends uh, and then he tweets about it. Is that what happened this morning and does that go on? I'm sure you're disappointed he's not watching CNN. Uh, I, I think he watched but, a lot of CNN, if you don't mind. Me and, <laughs> I, I don't think that's true. Your numbers would be higher. Um, I, so, uh, in, in reference to uh, the question specifically, no, let's not. Uh, in response to the question, as I just said, the president has a great deal of understanding. This is top of mind. He was talking about it last week. He is issued a presidential memo on it. Uh, so it's not something that just happened this morning. This has been an ongoing discussion and something of great importance. The president doesn't believe that uh, Americans rights or liberties should be abused, but he certainly believes that Americans should be protected. And he wants to make sure we do both of those things, uh, and that's why he supports the 702, but has concern uh, with FISA more generally. Matthew? Thank you. Jim? Sir, uh, just to be uh, crystal clear on this, uh, does the president want a wall in exchange for uh, giving those dreamers protection? The president wants border security. Okay. And just to be clear. Okay, so what does border security in, entail? Does it include the wall at this stage, or could the wall wait until later? Uh, the wall is one of the pieces, uh, as well as technology uh, and another a number of other uh, things that have been laid out by the Department of Homeland Security. I believe that Secretary Nielsen spoke about that pretty extensively at the meeting today, uh, That and that portion was so, covered by so you all during has, that time frame. The wall has to be part of a deal in order for these dreamers to have protection? Border security does have to be part of uh, this process. Why, I mean, it, it, there's, a di there's a difference, Why we right? want to secure our border? I absolutely do, because the safety and security of the people of this country are the president's number one responsibility right. and his number one priority when it comes to anything that he does. So absolutely. That, but you understand how Andrew? the law could be different than border security, sir. Border security can no, mean actually, drones, I don't, it can Jim. mean agents, it could be more fencing. It doesn't necessarily mean a physical And that's part of the negotiation the that we expect Congress to have. But you, and you and understand Democrats are saying that they may not be in favor of this kind of deal. That they're if not if Democrats are in favor dreamers. of protecting American citizens, then I think we've hit a sad day in American history, but I don't believe that to be the case, because as we heard many of them say as they sat around that table when several of you were in the room, they are committed to border security. They do want it, and most of them have voted for it previously uh, before this legislation hit the floor. So anything different no is just... A wall. If they say thanks, but no thanks for a wall. Jim, I'm not negotiating okay. with you. I'm going to let Congress take care of that, Andrew. Yeah, if, if you didn't see confusion and contradiction uh, between that first tweet and the White House past stated policy, then why two hours later issue that second tweet that seemed to, to clarify the position? We weren't confused, but some of you guys were. We wanted to make sure you knew the White House position. People on the Hill or, or people in we got these offices? I had several questions saying. from people in the room, uh, as I'm sure uh, all of you know, because most of you were the ones sending them. President's been clear about what his position is. We've issued several statements on this, put out one last night that had to do with this. Uh, look, I, I can't be more clear. I'm speaking on behalf of the president, on behalf of the administration, uh, on what our position is, and I think I've laid that out several times here today. Blake? Sarah, Sarah on, on Medicaid and what CMS put out today, critics would say you need to be healthy to get a job in the first place. How are they wrong? Uh, Look, certainly we want the American workforce to be healthy, and we're focused on helping improve health care across the board, but we also want people to have jobs. We're working on both of those things simultaneously. I don't see how that uh, conflates with one another. Taking advantage of the system? Is that what I'm sorry? Do you think people are just 
just flatly taking advantage of the system? I think there are certainly cases where that happens. Um, we don't think that's, you know, the overwhelming majority, but there's certainly uh, that's an issue and something we want to be sure to address. Um, Sarah, um, back in the summer, the president said 100 percent he would talk with special counsel Mueller. Uh, yesterday, he said, we'll see what happens. He seemed to raise questions about whether there would be an interview. <clears throat> What's changed between the summer and now and the president's thinking about speaking with uh, Robert Mueller? Nothing's changed. We're going to continue to be fully cooperative uh, with the special counsel as we have been. However, the president and his personal attorneys are going to discuss this matter with the office of the special counsel, not reporters, uh, and that's going to be the process that we follow. Dave? Those, those discussions are still going on? Uh, we're still cooperating fully with the special counsel, yes. Dave, go ahead. Back on the tax cuts, you mentioned that uh, the Walmart bonuses are having the impact that you had hoped. Um, as you know, Republicans alone on, on, in Congress passed the tax cuts. Democrats didn't vote for it at all. Why do you do you We think that's have, sad. We wish they had. How do you explain then that almost twice as many Republican incumbents are quitting Congress this year as opposed to Democrats? Uh, look, it's a midterm election, um, but I, we fully anticipate uh, moving forward with uh, strong House and Senate Republicans. Whether uh, it's this year or next year, we're still focused on getting things done for the American people. And um, I really can't weigh in too much on specifics of the election or the midterms, but we feel really comfortable with where we are and certainly with the record of success that we've had in 2017 to be able to run on that in 2018. Stephen. Sir, I am still confused about the timing of the tweet this morning because it was 7.30 this morning and the President referenced the fact that the House was going to vote today on this controversial FISA bill. He said that he intimated that under FISA his campaign was abused. Uh, why would he do that this morning, the morning of the House vote on a, on a, on a program that he so cares about and wants As I said, it was top of mind. DNI also put out a new policy on FISA this morning. This is something that's been ongoing, uh, a regular topic of discussion, and the president wanted to put something out. There's not much more than that. Sarah, yes. Sarah uh, yep. I'm not sure I got a clear answer from the Treasury Secretary to my question about what this administration hopes to achieve with additional sanctions on Iran. So. I want to give you a crack. I'll wait until additional sanctions are made before I weigh in on uh, what that would look like. But as the Treasury Secretary said, we anticipate that that's likely to happen, and we'll keep you posted as it does and what that process will look like. Michael? Uh, yeah, we haven't made a final decision on uh, JCPO. Ones would be outside of that. Process. Obviously, yeah. Okay. Uh, back to uh, sorry. Back to immigration, real quick. Um, Yesterday, I guess, a group of House Republicans put out a, an immigration plan that would deal with DACA, but would also do a whole lot of things that weren't kind of under the umbrella of the four things that you guys outlined in the meeting yesterday. Um, was that helpful? Was that not helpful to, to getting to a, a, a deal ultimately? Do you, does the President wish that they, you know, take that off the table so that you can focus on what might be happening with Senator Flake or others in the Senate? How does how – does, a, a no, we think that's a, we think it's a great starting point. We think it's a great great place. Even though uh, it went beyond what the, the parameters that the president very specifically and then you later after he let out the out. things he felt had to be included, not just what could be included. Uh, certainly, we think that this is a good starting point, part of the negotiation process. Um, if we could get everything done, we think that's much better than just getting part of it done. But we're okay with getting uh, a deal done as long as it falls into the parameters that the president. Laid he, out. But he understands, right, that, that adding the extra things are what makes what, what has the potential to make this more difficult because various constituencies think of those things as poison pills that are actually going to make that I think that's why that it's called a negotiation. Everybody puts everything on the table they want. Uh, you figure out what you're not willing to give up, which we've laid out, and you try to come out with everybody winning, which that's what we're hoping to do, both uh, Republicans, Democrats, the House and the Senate. We've laid out those non-negotiables for us, and we're going to move forward in that process. You, you and get hope that to get by, the, by the end of by, by the next week or so, or does or does or do I'm you not going to put a time frame on it, but we certainly hope to get it done. I think the priority is making sure uh, that we get it done and we get it done right. Uh, April. Sarah, Sarah um, Secretary Mnuchin said that um, this White House has been working with businesses um, as it relates for a while, as it relates to this tax plan, and when it comes to Walmart. Had they had this White House been talking with Walmart about a safety net for the employees that were going to lose their jobs today? Because I'm looking at a sign right now from Sam's Club that says.
this club will be closed on January 11th, 2018. That's today, the day that Secretary Mnuchin talks about how wonderful there will be increases in pay um, for Walmart workers. <coughs> I'm not aware about a conversation about a specific safety net. I can tell you uh, that we're excited about the fact that they've raised minimum wage. They have increased opportunities when it comes to paid family leave um, and that they are increasing salaries to over a million American workers. We think that's a positive uh, in terms of specifics on a safety net and conversations around that. I couldn't now, speak to that. With welfare reform? Is there a status report? Because I understand that uh, uh, Ryan and uh, McConnell are not together on issues of welfare reform as it relates to education. Where does the President stand on this back and forth? We're having conversations about that. We think it's important uh, policy to look at, and but right now our focus uh, primarily is on the budget and secondary is getting a deal done uh, in regards to immigration on DACA and border security and most likely uh, moving on to infrastructure from there. John? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Two brief questions. The President said yesterday that, and I quote, we are going to take a strong look at the libel laws. Now, many lawyers said that was an unusual statement because all libel laws are at the state level and not the federal level. Was he referring to state should take a look at libel laws or something else? I think certainly states should take a look at it. Look, the president's frustrated uh, with the misreporting and fake news that is regularly takes place. Um, he is tired of the media's obsession over recent fictitious book on the president and his administration, and he thinks that when things like that happen, there should be some action of recourse. He's simply stating that it should be looked into. Francesca, I mean, sorry. he meant the states, not that there should be federal libel laws. I think he was speaking generally that libel laws should be looked at. My other question Second is, question. is the administration um, have any reaction to the reports of the arrest of former Iranian President Ahmadinejad, who was leading a protest movement against the regime? Not at this time. No, John. Francesca. Thank you, sir. Uh, back on the president's first tweet this morning in FISA, um, when he said that it may have been used, the FISA Act, to surveil and abuse his campaign, what specifically was he talking about there when he said may and abuse and surveil? Could you point me in the right direction? Uh, look, I think that this is something we've talked about many times before. Uh, there are a lot of things that indicate that there was surveillance at Trump Tower, and um, I'm not sure what the clarification is needed on that front. Trey? Uh, thanks, Sarah. Two questions for you. First, um, a few days ago you said the White House uh, did not have any reaction uh, to the uh, transcript that was released by Senator Feinstein related to Fusion GPS. Is the President aware of this transcript? Um, and does he have any reaction uh, to the FBI uh, references within the transcript uh, and what was said by that gentleman? Uh, we certainly think it's a um, gross overstep uh, by Senator Feinstein to release that transcript. Uh, there's been a lot of comments about obstruction of justice, and frankly, the only people that we've seen trying to influence the investigation are uh, former Director Comey and Democrats in Congress, and that would include uh, Senator Feinstein, Representative Schiff, who have both selectively leaked to the media witness interviews. We see that to be a big problem and something uh, that uh, should certainly be considered and looked at. Follow-up question. Uh, today, Ecuador announced that it's granting uh, nationality to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Uh, does the president agree or disagree with this decision by the Ecuadorians? I haven't spoken to him about that. Can I ask you on, on, on Iran again? When the president went through the exercise in October of decertifying but uh, signing the sanctions waivers, he said uh, words to the effect of fix it or he wouldn't do this again. Uh, the fix was supposed to include some legislation which hasn't happened yet. Is the president comfortable with where the fix it part of this process is right now and, and what, what is his feeling about what a fix would look like? Look, the president still uh, strongly believes this is one of the worst deals of all time. Uh, and one of the single greatest flaws is that its restrictions leave Iran free in the future to openly develop their nuclear program and rapidly achieve a nuclear weapons breakout capability. Uh, obviously, we see uh, big problems with that. The administration is continuing to work with Congress and with our allies to address those flaws, uh, and we'll keep you guys posted as a decision on that front is made. Hallie? 
Thanks, Sarah. I want to ask actually about offshore drilling, but before I do, I'm hoping you can clarify something that you said a couple of times now, which is that a lot of people were confused by that tweet. So Mike Pompeo... Actually, Tom I didn't say a lot of people. You guys said a lot of people were confused. What was, you, we weren't confused, but some of you were. Some what of you said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so I want to ask about that, because Mike Pompeo was obviously out talking about this, pushing for this. Tom Barsh, a lot of people in the president's administration were representing the president's position on this, that he wanted this to pass. His tweet today was confusing. It was contradictory. It just was. So how are people supposed to trust, not us as reporters, but lawmakers, stakeholders, policymakers, that the people representing the president's position actually are? Um, I think that the premise of your question is completely ridiculous and shows the lack of knowledge that you have on this process. Um, I've, I've tried several times. I'll do it a, a tenth time here. Look, the president supports the 702, uh, but he has some very strong concerns about the Pfizer program more generally. Again, this is why he put out a memo last week uh, outlining such and why uh, the DNI director put out a new policy this morning. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what the confusion is there. I just cleared, sir, before Sorry. I ask about Sorry. drilling, that you Thank definitively you. are saying that the president's tweet this morning was, in your view, not at all confusing and not at all contradictory. You, you think that's an accurate statement? I I just want to be very clear about this. Yeah, it wasn't confusing to me. I'm sorry if it was for you. Jake. Let me ask you about the offshore drilling ban, Sarah, sure, because there's ahead. been a lot of questions about what's happening in Florida. There have been other states that have pointed to the reason this administration is given for exempting Florida, saying that they also are not, they also would like to be exempt. So how is exempting Florida from the ban anything other, in critics' view, than giving a political favor to White House allies in a key battleground state? Uh, look, the president is a massive advocate for America not just being energy independent but being energy dominant. That's just part of that process is um, the offshore drilling. That's why it's opened up for public comment. These are going to continue to be negotiations. We're going to continue to look for places and ways that we can make America more energy dominant. If that's one of them, then we're going to continue forward in that process. Uh, that's why we've opened up drilling in Anwar, the Keystone Pipeline, and cut a lot of job-killing regulations that have to do with that. We're going to continue moving forward in that process. It's an open comment period, and we'll continue to talk with other stakeholders as we make decisions uh, for other areas and other states. Was Jake? Not a political favor? Thank it's you, not, Sarah. I am not aware of any political favor uh, that that would have been part of, so no. Jake? Thank you, Sarah. On prison reform, the president recently commuted the sentence of a first-time offender or father of 10 children who had been sentenced to an excess of 27 years. What kinds of injustices does the president view as priorities? Uh, look, the president is looking, uh, one of the big topics of conversation for today specifically is looking at reducing the rates of recidivism uh, specific to helping reduce violent crime. Uh, this is a beginning conversation. This is to, um, a listening session, and uh, we're going to continue working through this process. But that was the number one topic uh, at today's meeting, and, and that's the big priority he has on that front at this uh, point. There have been reports out, and if you could please clarify, uh, what is is Mr. Kushner's role in the prison reform initiative exactly? Uh, he's helping lead that conversation uh, and put uh, stakeholders together from a number of different areas that have expertise on this matter. I'll take one sure. last question. Sure. Anita. Can you just, going back to immigration, can you just shed a little bit of light on what's, what the holdup is? Uh, members of the Republican Party were in the negotiations. They're the ones who are saying they agree with Democrats. The administration has been in the meetings, at least some of them. So what is the, what do you know not like? Can, I believe there's only one member that said that there was a deal reached and the other members uh, are well in sync on the same page that we haven't quite gotten there, but we feel like we're close. Um, and again, we're going to keep having these conversations. The president had a meeting here uh, today with uh, a number of members, both from the House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, as a follow-up discussion on immigration. and. Again, we feel very strongly that we can get a deal made. One piece that the president talked about missing, is that the issue, or is there not enough funding? Can you shed a little I, I, I think it's Democrats uh, agreeing to the other side of the deal. I think that's where we are. And, again, we're confident and feel like we're going to get there. Thanks so much, guys.